if the government really want to rein in the power of big tech, why do they keep giving them such massive fucking contracts? <laughs> Our Lord God made four and a half million miracles and them's you as far as I'm concerned. Welcome, welcome to our journey of mutual awakening. Where will we be going today? If you're in the UK in 2022, between January and May, I'm performing live all over the place. There's a link in the description if you fancy coming to see me. In the meantime, let's look at the relationship between your government and big tech. Remember we see these congressional hearings and people look over their glasses and they've got a bottle of water and they go, listen, what exactly are you doing? And you know that really the way they want to take this is, right, we want people to register their names on the internet so we can control them. They're not ever going to do anything about the power of big tech because the power of big tech and the power of government is the same power. It's like me punching myself in the foot, which I do once in a while, to let the feet know that I'm the real boss. But ultimately, I need them to stand up. Let's have a look at this. A new report has laid bare the relationship between Silicon Valley and the American state and the trillions of dollars they've made since 9-11. The war on terror was a veritable feeding frenzy for defence contractors, with the sector profiting to the collective tune of trillions. However, it wasn't the only industry cashing in. As a new report produced by three US campaign groups reveals, household names in tech like Google, Amazon and Microsoft have respectively reaped billions from selling tech to the war machine. So that's interesting, isn't it? We're all aware that the military industrial complex benefits from war and that that could lead you to think that war is a business, a racket, rather than, you know, oh, we've got to protect these people's rights against some corrupt regime or they're a threat to us. But we're not so aware of how these sort of modern, glistening, Silicon Valley, shiny building, colourful logos, slick product organisations are profiteering in the exact same manner. So this is an interesting report. In all, 86% of government contracts awarded to Amazon and 77% to Google to date are said to have been related to the war on terror. Oh no, there's terror. Let's go to war against it. Is that not going to make it worse? Probably, but let's do it. Who are we going to need to help us? Amazon and Google? After all, Google is a search engine and Amazon delivers stuff to your house quick. That's what I want on my team when it comes to dealing with terrorism. That income played a pivotal role in transforming these organisations from small startups literally operating from basements into global behemoths. Now, whether you believe that's true or not, that's up to you. I know some of you lot have got some interesting theories around all of that. But one thing that seems to be true, again, in this instance, is the government does the job of sucking your money out of your life and sticking it to them rich organisations. Once again, look at that. All these contracts. Government's got no money. That's your money. What's more, the crosshairs of this effort have now been turned inward with everything from databases to drones repurposed for domestic use. It's so interesting, isn't it, the developing narrative. First it was the Cold War, then it was the war against terror. Now it's the war against you. Of the five federal agencies that have spent the most on the services of major tech companies over the past two decades, four were central to or established as a result of the war on terror. The Departments of Defence, Homeland Security, Justice and State. Since 2004, at least 44.5 billion has flowed from this quartet to big tech. The report calculates that that sum could have provided food and nutrition aid to the entire population of Afghanistan 15 times over, ensured access to shelter, healthcare, food and water to the entire population of Iraq 26 times over, or distributed over £108 billion worth of food in Yemen. It might seem like a weird comparison to draw that, but remember when you go into them wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, when we go into those wars, it's always like, we've got to, we've got to help Iraq and Afghanistan. Look at them, the poor bastards, they're struggling. Well, just give them the bloody money then, instead of giving it to Google and Amazon and bloody Boeing and all them other people, Lockheed Martin, give it to those people. Oh, sorry, did we say help Afghanistan and Iraq? What we meant was help Lockheed Martin, help Google and help Amazon. We've got to help Amazon. They was in a basement a little while ago. These buggers are sending packages around. They want to deliver stuff by drones. Just some more of your money, please. If you want, we'll do a war on all what you can watch on the telly while we give Amazon your money. Yeah, all right. Instead, it funded endeavours such as Google's Maven program, which used artificial intelligence to make drone strikes deadlier. Do you know what drone strikes need to be? More responsible? Yes, but also deadlier. 
data analyzed only covers publicly available information too, so cited figures are very likely an underrepresentation. In the same period, hundreds of individuals have also rotated between high-level jobs at tech giants and the department splurging on their services. But we see that all the time, don't we? Once again, big tech and government don't look at them as two separate entities, look at them as one entity. How ridiculous it would be that regulation would come from an interactive component of one solitary entity. According to official data, Google turned over information to US authorities when asked in 82% of cases in 2020. Of course they're going to facilitate the spying, they're being funded by the government. Facebook, meanwhile, complied with 89% of Washington's requests. Its threat intelligence division, launched in 2015, is a veritable den of spies, counting numerous former CIA and NSA operatives among its staff. Amazon reported an 800% spike in state requests for information recorded by its Echo, Fire and Ring devices, as well as searches for its website and app last year. It also hired at least 20 bureau veterans between 2017 and 2020 alone, some of whom retained their top secret security clearances. Oh my God, so they're working at Amazon and they've still got their top secret security clearance. That means they can dabble about and poke around and have a little prod and a poke. They're essentially... The, see what I keep telling you, it's the same organisation. That's It's even worse than I thought. Steve Panderleeds, security chief at Amazon Web Services, previously served at the NSA, CIA and FBI at the highest levels. Shouldn't there be some regulation, some prevention, some measure to stop corporations having access to the highest levels of government, that degree of privilege? Well, yes. Will there ever be? No, not unless things radically change. The whole thing is in a gleeful osmosis of mutual appreciation and celebratory backslapping. This may account for why the intelligent community is so uncharacteristically trusting of the company. In 2013, the CIA invested hundreds of millions in a cloud computing system constructed by the division to enhance information sharing capabilities. In August, the NSA awarded a contract worth $10 billion to Amazon Web Services, under which all its signals intelligence and foreign surveillance data will be collated in a single, easily searchable repository. The move is being challenged by Microsoft, which was also a bidder. Phew! Oh, thank God. I was worried for a minute. I was thinking the whole thing was being controlled by monopolies. Joseph D. Rosek, who the report notes played an integral role in the creation of the Department of Homeland Security, is now Microsoft Executive Director for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism. It might as well be a sitcom where they put moustaches on and run about, Hello, I run the CIA. Oh, hello, I'm working at Amazon. Do you think we could spy on some of your customers? Well, I don't see why not. They shouldn't be so bloody naughty if they don't want to be spied on. You make a good point, me. And also, I like that British accent you're doing. <laughs> Thank you all for me. I like your American accent. Look, let's not focus on the accents. Let's focus on this data collection. Yeah, good point. Sorry, we got sidetracked. The company found itself in hot water in 2013 when documents released by Edward Snowden revealed that its information sharing policies extended to collaborating with intelligence services to allow user communications to be intercepted, with Microsoft actively helping the NSA to circumvent its own encryption. In one file, the NSA bragged that subsequent to the tech giant's 2011 purchase of Skype, it collected three times the amount of video calls made through the platform than it did previously. So you can see how monopolies commissions that are meant to intervene to prevent power being centrally organised might be tempted to allow it to happen when they've got partnerships with these consolidated powerhouses of big tech. It makes sense when you think about it. That's why you have Amazon. Microsoft and you know all those other big powerful organizations we're told stories these are geniuses these brilliant geniuses no it's because you want power centralized so collaboration between that power and the state is easy so there's an easy symbiosis between those organizations if you have genuine competition thousands of little companies doing stuff you can't control them all you can't go this one like sooner or later you'll run into someone with some principles and you can't have that because otherwise, how are you going to run a country? Think of all the other questions that it answers, like, why don't they just tax these billionaires like Jeff Bezos? Jeff, we're going to have to tax you. I don't think so. i got to keep me in some cock rockets if you guys want access to all that information. <laughs> Jeff, you keep your money. You earned it. You work very hard. And good luck up there, fucking space in its face. Ah, I don't need luck, baby. i got money. Shocking as the report's details may be, it isn't actually anything new. Good night. The internet itself grew out of ARPANET, a computer network bankrolled by the Pentagon's Advanced Research Projects Agency. Your money. This, of course, has enormous implications for its modern day usage. In the words of journalist Yasha Levine, the web was developed as a weapon and remains a weapon. Oh, that's cool. 
With Washington's national security interests and objectives dominating almost every sinew of the network. Similarly, Google's own origins trace back to a US intelligence program in the 1990s. What? 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 Under which academics were financed to create a system whereby vast quantities of data on private citizens could be monitored, collected and stored. And individual users identified and tracked. Oh man, you think that Google is for you, but Google is for them. It's so crazy, isn't it? You think that your phone is for you, but the phone is for them. You don't use your phone, your phone uses you. You don't use Google, Google uses you. And now it's clear its origins. That's why you have to tell the story. Just some plucky young guys in their own basement created this tech. Throughout the search engine's development, company founder Sergey Brin met regularly with research and development representatives of defense contractors and the CIA. One has since recalled how he would rush in on rollerblades, give his presentations and rush out. Hi, hey, guys, I'm going to give a presentation. We'll spy on everybody for you. Could you give us some money? That's right. Now fuck off out of here, rollerboy. I'm leaving. Bye. Never forget, too, that the CIA is quite the trendsetter in Silicon Valley. For every single dollar invested in an emerging tech company by its venture capital arm in QTEL, the private sector injects $18. It may be incumbent to bear this in mind next time one reads about the latest startup guru set to take the world by storm in the mainstream media. A hipster or geek they may sincerely be, but their products will almost inevitably have military and or intelligence applications encoded within its very core. Wow, what a lesson, what a story, what a great piece of journalism. We have to review the way we look at Facebook, Google and Amazon. It's not a side hustle, the spying. It's the function. It's not a bug. It's a feature. That's what it's there to do. An inadvertent consequence of Google and Facebook and all them guys spying is that you get to like, find out a little bit of information once in a while. But that's just like, so that you can be on there granting them access to all of your private data. What an extraordinary revelation. Did you already know that stuff? Let us know in the comments below what you think about this story. Let us know other things you'd like us to look into so we can go on this journey together. You think I think I'm better than you? I don't think I'm better than you. We're all in this together, ain't we? Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Turn on that notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at this. And sign up to my Awakening Side channel because one thing that's not being surveyed as yet by these powerful entities is your inner space, your inner life. Sign up to my mailing list. It's one click away. And if you find yourself in the UK between January and May, come and see me live so we can share in human contact, togetherness, unity, the one place they cannot control. Stay free.